Hey y'all, what's going on? It is Barb Meets World and you guys are back yet again for another Real Housewives of Potomac Season 8 Episode 19, The Reunion Part 2. If you can tell by the title, usually, you know, it would say a little cute little recap, a little review, but you know, I, I feel based on how I felt last week and based on how this episode made me feel yesterday, that it's going it, to, it's going to give more of a rant. So I went ahead and did myself a favor and changed that word in the title. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, we are here on this fine, fine Monday. Did you guys catch the eclipse? Because I, I, I did. I caught a little bit of it. If y'all don't know, I am a super duper nerd when it comes to science and space and all of those things. So, you know, of course, I had to go and take a gander. But nonetheless, back to what we are here to talk about Y'all, this episode, um, this episode really got me feeling some type of way. And I say that because we're still getting hung up on the old same snags. We're still getting hung up on things that have been, I'm not even going to say proven, things that have happened in the past that are undeniable somehow we continue to deny them on this show. And I just I just don't understand. I don't get it. But before we get into all that, you guys, please go ahead and hit the like button for me. Please, please, please. It helps me as far as the algorithm. It helps me attract new viewers such as yourselves. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead, like, also hit that subscription button. And while you're at it, you might as well hit the notifications bell. So, you know, every time I upload, shout outs to my people that are watching on Twitter. If you would like to be a part of the conversation over here on YouTube, don't hesitate to find us over here. Um, What else? What else? What else? Check the description box below for all other pertinent information and shout out to the replay gang. Where do I start? Where do I even start? Where do I start? This might be a little bit all over the place, but please bear with me. As I said to you guys, this, this reunion gave very much a uh, rant. So don't plan on being up here forever and ever and ever. So let's get into it, y'all. All right. So Mia, she knows her body. She did IUI. We do know there's some overlap with all of that. And because of that, she believes that, Jer that Gordon is the father of Jeremiah. However, Ink doesn't believe that Gordon's father. He believes he is the father for whatever reason. And all I can say about that is that Mia should nip that in the bud because it's going to impact the child. You feel me? There shouldn't be all of these question marks. There shouldn't be all this conversation. And I'm glad that Karen was there in these moments to kind of reel things back in and say like, hey, like, let's for the best interest of the child, let's just table this conversation. I couldn't agree more. Moving right along. Um, Ink's occupation, don't really care about that. Shout outs to Candace, though. I did have a little quick kiki when she says that, uh, yeah, he he jabbles in rap. Uh, <laughs> that made me laugh. And I really cherish that because as we all know, Candace is not going to be returning next season. I mean, quite as it's kept, some of us probably are not going to return either. But anyway, I just really appreciated that one-liner because we know that Candace, uh, doesn't matter if you like her or don't like her or whatever you feel, her one-liners, her reads, her comments, all of that is going to be sorely missed. And yeah, so just had to give our little kudos for that one. What else do we want to talk about? Robin's just too dumb to catch it. Ooh, what, what, am I, what was I talking about right here? Mia says she told Robin directly she was filing for divorce. Yes. Okay. So I can't remember who made mention of it in their review last week of the episode, but one of my faves made mention of how Mia came on trying to make such a splash and really give it to, to us. You know, she came in on a thousand from the gate. So a lot of her, a lot of her splash 
was due to her bringing up and embellishing and kind of stretching the truth and, and straight up lying. So because she came in like that, I feel like now that things have kind of settled, she's found her footing a bit more. She's kind of trying to throw truth out there or more truth to, to stuff now. And we're viewing her as a liar because that's where she, she came in lying. So she really did herself a disservice if you ask me y'all, because she should have just kept it. This is why you should just keep things real from, from day one. Like just keep things real from day one so that nobody can call you a, you know, a liar down the road <clears throat> because it's, she's just fighting an uphill battle. There's always going to be, some people in the viewing audience that are looking like, hmm, are you telling the whole truth? Are you telling 90% of the truth? But just two years ago, you said that you, um, you said that uh, um, just every, all the details about her, her marriage, this inheritance, um, just all of these little details that she kind of bent in the beginning are now kind of coming full circle and we're still like, okay, what is the truth though, Mia? Like for real though. Mm. I didn't like though how she said to Robin or she, she tried to justify things by saying like, hey, I told Robin that I was, fi well, I filed for divorce, but if you listen back, when they play the clips back, she said that she had previously retained a, a lawyer to file or whatever, but she made it seem like they're on stage just now that she told Robin that she was actively follow, filing two different tenses, two different tenses. So I see what she was getting at, but no, you said that you had filed. So therefore, technically, no, you, you didn't come forth with the whole 100% transparency of what was going on in y'all's marriage right then and there you made it seem like it was like past tense you guys are working things out i had thought about that some months ago or whatever but now i'm off that we're going to counseling yada 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 so um i, I could see how there's some confusion there and i'll actually pose this question to you guys do you believe that uh, are we supposed to hold Mia to the same standard that we hold Robin to? Do we feel like Mia was less transparent with her stuff? Just as Robin was less than tra transparent about her stuff last season? <clears throat> Y'all let me know in the comments. Hey, cousin. How are you doing on this lovely Monday? Hey, Kimmy. Good to see you guys. Um, what else did I want to point out in this first scene? Andy asks about her inheritance. Yes. So she said she lost three grandparents the same year that she met Gordon or whatever. And that's where the inheritance came from. But she also follows up with saying how it, it, about a year into their marriage, she found out that he was functioning bankrupt. And this, again, this is where it's like, but you made it seem like you, he had much, like, he, what's the truth here, Mia? What's the truth here? So it's like she's trying to clean up her previous lies, but it's only turning into like a bigger mess, if you ask me. Moving right along. Mm. They have to go to court for the unpaid rent. So that apartment that she was filming in for this, this season, apparently they owe some back rent. Well, by they, I should say Gordon, because Mia apparently paid her half and she moved out, but he wasn't trying to move out and she wasn't going to pay his half. She had already paid her half. I'm like, I get that. But at the same time, hmm. If it'll help you, if you, if it'll help you out in this situation to just pay it and move on, I personally would. But at the same time, I could understand why she feels the way she does. It's like, I, I already paid my part. Like you, that's, that's on you. But at the same time, if, if both y'all's names on that lease, then they don't care about none of that. 
I, it's coming from one of y'all. I don't care who it comes from, but we want it. So, but that's for her to sort out. She can't even be officially divorced until June of this year at the earliest. So whatever. Mm. Do How do you guys feel about Candace and Wendy not reaching out to Mia when they heard the news in the, in the media or whatever? Because Wendy lets it be known that Gordon was going in on you. In on you. And you should be lucky that instead of airing you out, I just kept it on mute until right now. This is the first time I've been even bringing up any of this. That's a lot more respect and courtesy than I really had to give you, being as though prior to that, our last exchange was you throwing a drink, physically assaulting me. My thing is you can never like, Ooh, why, why do I have to keep repeating myself about this every week? I don't, anyway, you see, you see why this turns into a rant because I was, and I was just talking um, to my good sis Nola Reads about this the other day, like there's no reason why a show should have my blood pressure rising like this show does. Um, because it makes no sense why someone couldn't expect somebody to have a certain level of respect and sympathy for another individual that took it below that level. I do agree that these ladies should have a certain baseline of respect for one another. Even if I don't like you, there's a certain level of respect that I'm, I'm never going to drop it below this level with you at the same time. And we see each other on that one, right? But Mia had already sabotaged that when she physically assaulted Wendy, period. And Candace, for that matter, they were never that, 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 that close. And we also seen how their whole relationship started from the beginning. Remember the, the, the tossing, uh, the salad back and forth and all that. Like we, we remember all that and the things that she had said about Chris or whatever or in seasons prior. So again, I'm asking y'all, how could one expect somebody to have a certain level of respect for them when it's been proven that that's the feelings it's not mutual it's not mutual anyway <sighs> Candace says she just didn't want to get involved. And I mean, ultimately, I do respect that, especially when you have so many, so much shrapnel flying at your face on the show at all times. I would definitely be very selective of the things I engage in beyond that because Miss Mama has been dealing with, she, mm, she has been, nose deep in bullshit since dang near she got on the show almost definitely since season five definitely since even before that if you ask me but she she wasn't able to see what was really happening and they certain individuals were able to instead of getting her off, got another individual off instead. But she's been dealing with loads and loads of BS for a long time now. So if she didn't have it within her to extend herself to me in this situation, so be it. I'm not going to hold that against her. I don't give up. I don't care. Moving on. Why is Wendy Inc.'s favorite? It, it, pretty sure they... The way I took it was that they hadn't actually met in person, but like, did 
did she like show you a picture and you were like, she's my favorite? Uh, on what grounds is, is Wendy his favorite? That's my question. I was just kind of confused by that, but whatever. Whatever. So we come back from break and we're, we're confronting Giselle about the comments that she made regarding Wendy's mother. Giselle says that she didn't know that Wendy's mother was in the hospital. Okay, fine, so be it. But I feel like this just highlights why when you don't have anything nice to say about a person, regardless of if that person is actively going through something or not, just keep it to yourself. That, that's what I think should have happened in this situation. At the same time, though, I could also see where it's like, was Wendy, Wendy, were you trying to say that from based on your own feelings? Or were you trying to say that and, and place that on Giselle? I wouldn't necessarily place that on Giselle in this situation. And by no means is this me trying to give Giselle any legs up because y'all know how I feel about her. But I was just trying to understand what she was getting at with that. Like, you can definitely feel a type of way about that. It's like, girl, I, I, you said that. And lo and behold, my mom was in the whole hospital. Like, it was just bad timing. If you were, if she was trying to say that to illustrate a point about Giselle having poor timing when she didn't even know what was going on, which goes back to my point I just made. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. Because yes, you never know what somebody else is going through. But of course, Giselle, regardless, doesn't care. Has zero empathy. And, oh, hey, sit. Oh, wait. Hey, sis. How are you today? Hey, feisty. Hello, hello, hello. I think that was heavily edited. Okay, I hope so because I'm like, it, it wasn't completely connecting for me. Like, and I wanted to connect so that I can continue to go in on Giselle. That's what I want. No, they cut that scene. Wendy was responding to Mia trying to make them reach out to Giselle. Production cut the clip of Wendy and Kenneth saying they were going to pray. So there y'all have it. Yet again, things are edited in a certain way to make certain people look foolish or bad or however you want to put it but other people we have nothing for hmm that's interesting so production edit editing all that wow it, they strike again God, like and again y'all this is why it bothers me so much because it's just a lose-lose situation for I'm not going to say everybody because certain people, as you see, can never be held to the same standard as people on the opposite couch. And that's just not that's not fair. So although at times I wanted Candace to give more, although at times I wanted her to tag me in or I, you know, I just wish that she would give us that that classic Candace, I understood why she didn't because no matter what, it's always going to put the responsibility, the wrongdoing on either her or the cast member that's sitting on the other side of her, no matter what. We saw that in the same scene with Freaking Giselle, first of all, wait, actually, is it this scene where she tries to use, 
because her justifications for why she can't be a colorist are I don't agree with, but I, I want to ask you guys about that one. Was it in the scene? Mm. And a lot of people were jumping on Candace talking about, oh, you're always, you're always crying and you're a crybaby. Okay, maybe she is. Maybe, maybe she does cry a lot. Maybe, you know, that's just how her body responds. But that should never take the focus off of what's really occurring. In the original clip, Candace said, I will pray for them. Mia said, but still reach out despite how she treats you. That's her dad. Wendy said, when my mama was in the hospital, she called her evil. Per Wendy's point, you can make fun of my mother, but the world is supposed to stop when it's your family. And yeah, and then that goes back to also the grace thing. It's like, you can't, you you want everybody to have a certain level of respect because that's my daughter. But again, you don't have that same level of respect regardless if it's their, if another person's daughter, son, mother, father, pet, parent, whatever. If it's somebody that another person on that cast cares about, you don't, you, you don't have that same level of consideration or sympathy or sympathy or anything like that, Giselle. You don't. So just like Mia expected some phone calls and texts or whatever when she shouldn't have, you shouldn't expect or um, have an issue with someone else that you've already disrespected or sure showed that you don't give an F about prior to that. Yeah, the line is always moving. And I'm like... I, does she have a magnet in her pocket like Giselle? Like, I just, I don't get it. Oh, my plant just fell. Yeah, um, apparently everything on this show, everything in, in my house, everything that goes on in the world is Candace's fault. And that gets exhausting. That has to be exhausting. I'm not in her shoes. I'm just watching it from my couch and I'd be exhausted. Yes, this right here, if y'all didn't know that, um, Giselle's dad, don't let the his activism fool you. The, there is proof of this on this exact platform that we're on right now. So y'all go ahead and do your own research on that one, but it's been proven. So when Giselle tries to use certain justifications, oh, I went to an HBCU. I'm a part of an all black sorority. Oh, I married a black man. Whatever you want to say, none of that, in my opinion, gives, oh, like that means I can't be a colorist. I feel like that's the same thing. Like someone saying, oh, my best friend is black. There's, there are, there are, there are, there's no way that, they could be racist or whatever. And again, I'm not, I know the difference between colorism and racism. I'm just saying that's like someone saying, that's the equivalent of someone saying that. Like, just because you partake in certain things that are associated with being black or being whatever, it doesn't mean that you can't still have some, um, some ideals that don't, <laughs> don't align with someone who <laughs> I feel like should have anything to say to anybody else on this show. If you're not gizzard in her mind, it's F everyone and their kids, but you expect me to care when you're talking about your child's, but, and care, And don't get me wrong, y'all. When I say that, by no means am I agreeing with the the claims that Giselle was making as far as you know, Candace and, and Wendy making faces. I really don't feel like they was those making like genuine faces. I really don't. I feel like it was exactly how they explained later on in the episode or the episodes following, whatever, where it was like, well. Uh, this person, I, I, I don't like this person. We don't see it for each other. So of course, when they're talking about something, I'm going to feel awkward or 
in this case, you're talking about your children, which you have a history of trying to weaponize said children. So, of course, I'm going to then sit here like, this is awkward. I'm just going to smile and wave. This going to drink my drink. I feel like that's completely normal. Unfortunately, production is system with it because they intentionally edited that clip to villainize Wendy. Yeah. Um, and I just find it mighty coincidental that things are edited in a way all the time to support one person's narrative or one side's narrative. Because again, yeah, where, where are these clips of Wendy congratulating um, Grace uh, and asking if she's also gonna uh, to pledge AKA as well. Like, where are those clips? Mysteriously, they've they vanished. Like, how do y'all not see that? I'm, I'm not talking about y'all. Obviously, y'all in these comments right here, we, we see each other on that one. By y'all, I mean the people in other comments on other social media platforms, on certain groups, on certain pages, whatever. Those are the people that I'm confused about or on Twitter, whatever. Those are the individuals that I'm like, how do you not, how do you not see what's going on? You see what's going on. I, we both know you see what's going on, but you're going to still choose to stick to the lies and the BS and support this narrative over here. Like, just because you don't like somebody. I, that's just like a, a trait I'll never understand. I don't have that trait. I have the trait where if somebody I like does something that I don't agree with, I have no issue with speaking on that. I have no issue. I'm not gonna sit here and act like I don't see that they did something wrong. Yes, you, you said that. I remember you said that this morning. And I was like, I felt like I remember that too, but. Because it sounded mighty familiar, but I was like, am I having deja vu? No, no. Ridiculous. Um, I'm just going to move on for that because I don't want to raise up my blood pressure. And we're already at like 30 minutes. So anyway. Um, after the break, thankfully, Candace, the lump that she, um, she had, it has sh shrunk to the point that it's virtually not existent and she doesn't need to get a biopsy. So we're very happy about that. Um, so she can either move, move ahead with, you know, whatever project she has, whether that be, yes continuing her motherhood journey or her fertility journey, I should say, or whether she continues her music, whatever she wants to do, at least she doesn't have to be thinking in the back of her head, what is this lump? What, you know, do I have some underlying um, major health issue? Like, we're good on that. Happy to hear that. I'm always happy to hear that. Um, so, mm, Drew, and maybe you guys can help me with this. What I took from that is Drew reached out to somebody on Candace's team, her, um, or someone on her payroll, whoever. And instead of going directly to Candace about that, therefore, because Candace likes to do business a particular way, she wasn't too happy about that. That's, that's, how I articulated it, y'all let me know what you thought or if I missed something because I was I was really confused when she did when she said it the first time, but then again, I wasn't in the best uh, the right state of mind at that period in time. <laughs> so when I rewatched it, I was less confused, but I was like, I hope I'm I hope I'm catching this right. Um, because a lot of people had questions about oh. 
well, why didn't she want Drew back on, on the tour? Like, that was super shady to say. Um, there must be issues between them now. Da -da 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 -da. Candace said, congratulations to Giselle. To Giselle about Grace, but she ignored her. Candace said it low, but she said it. I do remember. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. It was just the um, part that Wendy was talking about her saying like, hey, is she also going to be... Um, I mean, which, I mean, would make sense, too. Would she be a legacy member of the sorority? Um, yada, yada, yada. But we just, it's just so befitting that that footage is whew, vanished in thin air. But yes, I do remember Candace saying that much. That's what I took from it. She didn't like the way business was done. And I respect that. I mean, at the end of the day, It, it, you can't do business with everybody. And it's probably best that she just let that be known now and didn't try to just bring her on anyway and then still have like tension underlying or anything like that. No, I'm glad that she was just like, nah, like she moved this way, I moved this way. It's okay. That doesn't mean that there's any, a huge issue. That's what I thought Candy was saying. Okay, good. Hi, Alvin. Alvin, I hope I'm saying that right. Hello, how are you? Wendy, um, congrats, Wendy congratulated her and asked about her being an AK on the Austin trip. They even mentioned lowly on the reunion while Wendy was talking. Mm hmm Yeah, they uh was that when they were whispering about um oh I'm I'm definitely not talking about Jason. Because they were they were over there whispering a whole bunch of uh, stuff. I think at one point I heard Giselle talking about how Wendy and Mia were bumping coochie or bumping coochies, and um, they apologized. Like I heard there was a lot of exchanges going on on that other couch, which again goes into the fact that this lady just has zero respect for anybody else. Like period. Production wasn't going to have any clips of Wendy and Candace doing anything. But no, it's like it's literally like as they're probably doing. Maybe they maybe. Yeah, y'all. Maybe they genuinely don't have any. Um, maybe they genuinely don't have any freaking clips of them doing good because at this point, I'm con I'm convinced at this point that like as like as they're filming, like it's like as soon as oh what 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 oh my gosh, Wendy and Candace just ran into that bur burning building and 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 rescued that cat and that old lady like click like i feel like as soon as they see them doing that it's like literally oh my gosh press the stop button like oh oh we can't have anything good about wendy, wendy and candace oh, oh oh my gosh no and on oh and i know my good cousin ranting will will get this analogy it reminds me of that episode of spongebob where freaking i think it fine dining it was a fine dining episode and if y'all if y'all I'm dating myself here. I don't really care, whatever. But there's like this one episode I remember when I was a kid of, of freaking SpongeBob where he had to like dump everything from his mind other than fine dining. And then when he was asked a question outside of fine dining, like you literally see the little SpongeBob's in his brain, like going through the filing cabinets. Like they can't find like any of that information because they literally destroyed everything that wasn't fine dining and that's what i see i feel like production in this case fine dining is um freaking robin and giselle and any anything that makes them look good like they keep they keep that's filed away that's behind lock and key but if it has anything to do with outside of fine dining a uh i.e freaking wendy and candace is shredded burned ran over with my car like it's it's freaking uh i can't like it's 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 crazy is that why drew only sang five seconds on candace song um i don't know i don't know i don't know about that but you mean on when we saw when we saw them perform together 
that's when they began to whisper, what do we expect? Eric is the same producer who gave us the season of OG. Yes, 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 yes. Which I just found this out recently. But Wendy and Candace don't really lie on camera, so why lie now? But according to every... Actually, I think I screenshot this. Maybe I can bring that up. Maybe... What time is it? Maybe I'll just push through this real fast so then we can maybe we can get into some of these wild comments that I was seeing already. <laughs> Giselle was shutting down Wendy and Candace all night. <laughs> Somebody said that on Facebook. Can you believe that? Giselle was shutting down Wendy and Candace all night. Just because she talks like this doesn't mean that she was shutting anyone down. Yeah, because that's what Giselle does. She doesn't. Mm. Okay, back to my notes, y'all. Back to my notes. Like I said, don't care about talking about Jason. Um, she could date whoever she want. He could date whoever they, he want. I don't believe their relationship anyway, so who cares? Um, a viewer called Ashley out for knowing Michael was suing Candace and her standing to gain something from the lawsuit. Ashley denies knowing, and Candace still doesn't believe Ashley knew. Whatever. Um, what's the, the next major thing that happened that pissed me off? Um, Andy asks Robin if she felt like Candace was coming for her job. Robin felt she was being critical of her job, and that's not really something that you do to a friend. Hmm. You know, Robin, Robin has such an issue with, because, because nobody else on the stage, it wasn't even about her, the comments that she made of her being critical of her job or anything, as much as it was about how nobody else accuse Robin of lying or trying to cover up or whatever. None of those things <clears throat> as it pertained to Juan Dixon. I'm like, well, they should have. They should have. And I, I quite, quite frankly, I don't really understand why they didn't. If I was any of those ladies on that stage, not even just Candace and Wendy. I would be, I would probably have been knocking on Robin's door as soon as all of that was exposed. Because how dare you come up here and expect, because she does, whether she wants to admit it or not, Robin does expect everybody. And we even saw it in this episode also, because later on, when she thought it was okay to ask, Robin, she can't ask anybody on the, anybody on that stage anything, especially as it pertains to a man. She can't, but she continues to do that, and she continues to try to force everybody. I, I, yep, I use the word force because she does. She continues to do it, as Karen said last week. What a boombox. And this week, by parting her lips to ask Chris a question, you continue to try to extract certain things from other people. But when that role is reversed or other people see you appearing to, appearing to basically hide, not hide, I say hide because she said it. She said it right the first time. She she was waiting for somebody else to bring it up. So for me, I don't care. That is equal to hiding on this show. On this show where you're supposed to just lay lay it all out there. Like we're not going, this isn't, this isn't an Easter egg hunt. Easter freaking just passed. We're not gonna go looking for your shit. You need to put that shit out here. Like no one's doing all that. But you continue to try 
to ask questions or dress up or do whatever shenanigans you want to pull that particular season or during that particular moment, you continue to do that to everybody else. And I just don't understand why. It's, I just don't understand why it's only Karen, Candace, and Wendy that see it for what it is. Everybody should see it for what it is. Because if, if I was anybody, again, if I was anybody on there, I would be pissed that I just worked my butt off all season making the show into something that resembles entertainment. And you could just sit back here and continue to really, she's, she's a coattail rider. That's what she is. And for the ones that haven't seen it, I, I don't really know what you've been watching. I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> See, I knew it. I knew it. It's okay, sis. It's okay. She wasn't shutting them down. She was yelling just because you loud doesn't mean you're right. I don't even feel like she was like, I don't even feel like it's like they, the only reason why they probably stopped talking is because I said before there's, it's a, it's a lose, lose situation. They gave her a good exit like season five reunion. Yeah. Yeah. And Again, y'all, I'm kind of probably all over the place with this. But again, that's why it says rant and not recap and review. But I think I got a little bit more insight as to why, as to how Candace reached the decision of not coming back. I really feel, I personally felt like, and who knows, she could correct me if she ever sees this. I don't know. I'm just basing this off of how I felt when Chris came out. I was like, just watching him, watching them. I was like, I feel like they, I feel like at that point they knew, or at least Candace did or whatever. We could read right there. The man was completely over it. I believe that. And I agree with what he said when he said, Hey, um, I clearly wasn't wanted. If I mean, if people are gonna, if people are gonna sit there and lie and make up stuff and whatever, like then clearly I'm 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 not wanted. So yeah, that, no wonder you didn't fucking see me. You wouldn't see me either. You wouldn't see most of us, especially when he not get he wasn't getting paid. So no point. They really did a lot of damage to that man's life. And just like he said, we're supposed to sit here and tell Candace that she needs to take responsibility for things she says or, you know, call out her for what she says. But the other side of that coin, we're just supposed to sit here and be OK with somebody saying, oh, I used the wrong word. Let's just move on. That's how I felt about that. <clears throat> Robert Romero Ramirez Dixon should have been on mute, much like she is with Juan, unless she on her knees. That and that's what I'm saying. And shout outs. I I, I tweeted this yesterday. Like shout outs to the diva Erica De Niro TV. If you're not watching her, you should be. I. And this is why I was so irritated last week because I was like, Candace, I want you to back these bitches up off you. Like, please do it for me. For us, like, please. But I understood at the same time why she didn't. I saw even more this week because no matter what she says, no matter what she does or doesn't do or doesn't say, she's always going to be in the wrong. The wrong. She's always going to be the culprit for whatever is being discussed at that moment. Oh, Kim Byer said she quit. She quit on that couch. Um, I will. I didn't watch his um uh review yet but yeah i'm like she's either new right now or prior to because uh, why do i need to continue to try to defend myself if 
y'all and by y'all i mean them over there y'all back there andy motherfucker right here like what is the point of trying to defend myself if you guys are just going to make me try to make me look like i'm crazy and i'm making stuff up when we both know what scenes we were in we both know what conversations we had we both whether it had been on text whether it had been in person whatever we all know what occurred yet y'all are still going to sit here and play in our faces and i'm tired of it giselle said leave and candace said i'm out i didn't see it but people are saying she quit there at the reunion oh i i completely i i, I can see that because what am what am i that and at the same time that would also one why am i trying to defend myself because at the end of the day why am i why am i trying to prove anything to you all when you y'all are y'all are not even people i really even want to be friends with or work for or be around because it should have never grown to this size in the in the beginning production just like i said last week should have been intervened seasons ago and we wouldn't have been where we're at Wendy highlights the fact that the conversation can never prog uh, progress to why a person would think someone else is a colorist because we're so fixated on professing and proclaiming that we are not color a colorist. If we're not going to talk about why it exists, then we might as well not have the conversation at all. Um, I see what Karen was trying to do there when she said like, oh, we're we're the, the, the perfect group of Black women on Bra the Bravo network to have this conversation. I was so glad though, when Wendy chimed in to let her know, no, because certain women on this, this couch don't even have the range to have said conversation. And I'm gonna leave it at that. And they know who they are, if you ask me. They know who they are. And I, uh, quite frankly, I don't really care about Robin being uncomfortable because if you're uncomfortable when with having that type of conversation, it either tells me A, it's because you are, or B, you don't have, you just as she said, you don't have the range. You don't have the mental capacity to have an intelligent conversation about that topic. Or, or y'all, or y'all, y'all with me? A, B, C, all of the above. I'm gonna go with C. I'm gonna go with C. It's giving you are and it's also giving you you don't have you don't have the abilities the, the you don't have the mental capacity to have that conversation and i don't care uh, i've seen some people trying to talk about um oh it's because she went to college and like that just that did go to college and she, i seen because i've seen some motherfuckers say that in the comments today well, Giselle had her college degree before anybody, uh, any of them did. Yeah, obviously, because she's older than them. Like, okay. But at the same time, and I'm going to say this, I, I have I have two degrees, and I'm going to say this. Just because somebody has a degree doesn't mean that they are this super smart person or anything like that. Um, I'm also saying that, yeah, because I do have those degrees sometimes both sides. And I say that because I don't want to school with some people out. Let me say it like this, less than intelligent individuals that have also walked across the same stage as me and have the same piece of paper that I got pieces, pieces of paper that I got. So just because Giselle has a degree don't mean, and, and knowing her, Knowing her, she probably used her looks to have people write her fucking papers, knowing her. So let's not use that again as justification. None of Giselle, I, I can, we can refute every single thing Giselle says to justify why she is not. But just as Wendy says, we spend so much time talking about that half of it but we can never move to the second half, which is why this is even being a topic of conversation in the beginning or why the other person feels the way they do or whatever. 
And if y'all didn't know, because a lot of people, I don't know, um, between both uh, Twitter and YouTube, we have over 56 people in here. And I don't know when y'all all started watching the show. I don't know if that was since day one. I don't know. A lot of people jumped on after season five, too. So I don't know. But just a little quick little history lesson, not even a history lesson, just some food for you guys uh, to think to think on. Yeah, this has been a topic since like literally the this show started since season one. And because it has been a topic since season one and because certain people are not on the cast anymore, like we've, we've seen people come and go and this is still a topic of conversation. And the only common denominator in the situation is the other people that are still on the, on the show that have been a part of that conversation since season one. Like this isn't the first time this came up. Shout out to Katie Ross. And did. I heard her say that, but no one brought it up again. They ignored her like they ignored Chris for checking Giselle. Robert alleged, allegedly sees herself as a white woman. Yeah, you mentioned that. I... I want. I want to see. I, I somebody give me a picture of um, Robin's license. I I really want to see that. I do. If it makes you feel uncomfortable, that should tell you something about yourself. Yes. So either a again you are, b you you don't have the mental capacity to have that conversation, or c all of the above. Pick one, Robin and Giselle. Pick one. Y'all, if you haven't liked the video, please go ahead and like the video for your girl. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if you are watching from Twitter, please come join. Come on over uh, to YouTube. Join the conversation. Join the, join the, um, subscribe to the channel. Please. Thank you. Um, let's keep going. I see, I see all 44 of you guys in there. Come, come on over here to YouTube. Come on. Um, is this when the husbands came out? Do I have anything else to say about the colorism conversation? Oh, Aneka, just, just go away. I, I do recall her asking why they thought that they were colorists and... Robin's like, uh, I don't know. You know, anytime we have a conflict with a with a brown skin person, we're we're a colorist, but they forget that I, I I be beefing with Karen and I have beef for three years with Ashley. Anyway, um, Aneka, her relationship, her marriage. A little weird to me not gonna lie sorry i sorry um and i don't know if that's because of her or because of her husband he just and we've seen him get a little extra hype about a situation even though it didn't require all that when they did the pickleball um event and all that and he decided to pick his bone with eddie and he was getting a little overexcited, I felt like, about that because it wasn't even that serious over a Facebook unfriend. Like, okay, Mr. Doctor, like, I'm going to use you to grow up. Again, prime example right there. Just because somebody, he's a whole, he's a, he's a whole doctor, right? Yeah. And he proved that he, he doesn't even have enough smarts about him to know that un being unfriended on Facebook is not grounds to get all hype with somebody. Am I making sense? I hope I am. Like, it it's just, oh, uh. <clears throat> let me just finish this up. And then again, maybe we can go over a couple of these comments. Um, but him talking about, you know, either, either I could be here for support or 
uh, I can get involved, like, or whatever, if you don't speak up for yourself, whatever he said back there, him being Ike. I'm just like, this is another situation where you're adding, like, you just want to jump in stuff and be involved and, and, and blow stuff up more than it has to be. And I don't like people like that. Like, calm down. Like, no one asks you to jump in and say a mother thing. It's just because you know that <clears throat> the grievances that your wife have are directed at a certain person and by person, um, because now we're bringing y'all out, y'all being the husbands, it's going to be y'all versus them. Like, so yeah, you can't wait to get involved in some stuff. That's not even that serious. Like relax, dude. Ugh. Ooh, they're just an odd couple to me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Y'all think that Robin's going to be <laughs> offended when she sees on the replay how Aneka said that uh, if Ike don't get himself together or whatever, if he not dare to support her, he can go ahead and go back to wherever Juan Dixon is. Y'all think that y'all think that Robin, <laughs> that was funny. Y'all think that Robin's going to feel that way because you know she be getting out of shape. Y'all know that she tries to act like she 100% doesn't care, but she 100% does care. And... I love to see her, um, I love to see her get all upset. Like, I just love it. It's just, those are only the, those are only good moments about this show. When I see her get upset, when I see Giselle sitting up there fuming, but not saying anything because we know, we know at the end of this episode, she was. Um, if y'all, you watch the episode and you've been, picking up anything that I've been putting down in this 57 minutes and 24 seconds, then you will know that Chris came out on that stage and set the record straight because I didn't hear not one peep coming from that couch. And, oh, ooh, this is a, this is a serious question I wanted to ask you guys. Did you guys catch when, like, it wasn't just me. Or was Andy super short with Chris? Like he he said a little, oh, I I like your outfit and uh or I want to borrow your outfit and he went over. Oh, I gotta skip. A, I gotta. It was because right. It was Ike because the neck was on the end. Then I gotta skip skip Ray. Um, he said, you know, hey Ray, how do you how do you like uh Karen's? You know, her little her tweaks and stuff. And Ray was like, oh yeah. <laughs> Ray, oh my goodness, Ray, Ray, Ray. Um, that was funny too. But you know, then he he got over to Gordon and he said whatever he said to him. Um, but when he got to Chris, he he was real short. He was just like, "Hi, Chris, how you doing?" Yeah, cool. And then he went ahead and asked Eddie about you know Happy Eddie and all that. I felt like he was super short with um Chris, and I just wanted to highlight that because I feel like. I wasn't surprised, but I was like, wow, like people really sh reveal who they like and don't like every five seconds on this show. And I say that because I really don't feel like um, Andy sees, saw, has been seeing it for Candace for quite some time. And, and we see that based on how he always has extra follow on questions and stuff to ask Candace, but completely neglects to look over here and ask a question so I feel like that was on par him kind of being very short with Chris during the introductions was on par with how he feels about Candace as well <laughs> yes she's gonna be in her feelings about Aneka's comments for sure yeah I, I yeah she is and just be and the crit mm, that's even crazier now that we're talking about people revealing their true colors based on the things that they say or how they act. Also going back to Aneka with that comment, it's like, oh, so, so you see the bullshit too, but you still side with them and you still want to sit over there and ask them questions and side. You, you see the bullshit too. You're just being willfully ignorant over there, but go off sis, I don't care. Is it is it that or I don't? It's just so weird. Yeah, she she been bossing them too, but at the same time, 
maybe it's because he i don't i don't know what they got going on over there i don't quite frankly i don't really give a fuck but just weird Andy was playing games the entire time. This needs to be his last time hosting RHOP. He doesn't have the range nor intellect. Ooh, thank you for that comment. I like that. I like that. Um, and hello, thank you for joining L one low O nine. I hope I'm saying that right. If I'm not, charge it, charge it to the game, not my heart. Thank you for being here and thank you for commenting. Um. Yeah, yeah, they really need to shake it up with that. I'm not saying that having a, another host will 100% fix everything by any means, but it definitely, I feel like the conversations will be able to progress a lot, um, a lot more. There'll be less biases in said lines of questioning. And um, I feel like, I feel like there needs to be somebody else that can can empathize to a certain degree. If you guys know what I'm trying to say, yes, she is. I think is she going to go on to say next week that, or has she gone on online and said whatever she said somewhere? I know that they were the ones that welcomed her in, or whatever the case was. When, if I'm not mistaken, Wendy definitely was very kind to you and very welcoming to you and was super excited to see somebody else that was from the same exact tribe as her and her family were are are from so, so uh he, yeah, kind of confused as to how that side was so much more welcoming to you and I'm sure some people might try to jump in the comments and say oh it's because oh it's because um, it's because Wendy had already made it clear that she didn't want her on the show and they tried to block her on the show. Okay. Show me, show me the concrete receipts of that. And then we can have the conversation because people keep saying that. And if you're, Lebe came on the show and didn't prove a goddamn thing. So I really need to understand where I really need someone to enlighten me as to where this side was just so genuinely welcoming to her when she could have been on this side the whole time without any of these issues she wanted to have said issues get stirred up if she does come back for another season she's going to be target number one yes 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 a lot of us have said this. A lot of us feel this. Uh, Aneka, I hope I hope you know your time is coming, sweetheart. I hope you know you're, yeah, it's, it's coming. And y'all, I can't promise that I'll be around to see it. And by that, I mean, I, this show, ooh, I don't, I don't know if I could do it, y'all. I really don't. But if I, if I choose to sit uh, next season out and I do wind up hearing through the grapevine that she's became public enemy number one, on the chopping, uh, on, on the on the cutting board, I am going to have the key of a lifetime. I'm, I'm gonna pop a goddamn glass of or a bottle of champagne myself to see that. Actually, she likes champagne so much. I'm gonna pop one in her honor of being on the fucking chopping block. Ooh, I can't wait. Giselle is nobody's friend. And for you guys that haven't been able to see that after eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight seasons is, my mind is blown. My mind is blown, y'all. But um, I really enjoyed, I really like thoroughly enjoyed Chris coming out, shutting Giselle down. I really enjoyed how he, he took up and and so that oh since we're talking about support and all that that's how you come on and support your wife on this show you hear that Juan Dixon that's how you do that you hear that Robin that that's what that was 
it was probably looked like it probably looked like some foreign thing because you're not used to like seeing that happen in your own personal life. But that's how you do that. And because all of these questions, 99.9% .9 of the questions, y'all, that were asked to Robin were because they, they had to do with something with Juan. So the fact that she doesn't, she does see, but the fact that she doesn't see why he should be there to take some of those bullets himself is wild, like absolutely wild to me. Shout out to Chris for saying, you know, so we're, we're, we're supposed to, again, I said this before, have Candace take responsibility for her words as it pertains to, um, to other people though at the same time they could just you know say that they said the wrong word and we just say okay put a smile on and keep moving that's not fair and that's why she said what she said when she said the goalpost is always moving because had had the shoes been on the other foot with this entire situation all y'all in those comments saying oh giselle never said that giselle never did this giselle has done nothing wrong Y'all would be going in on Candace if the roles were reversed in any of these situations. And you can't tell me I'm wrong. I love how Chris, I truly don't feel like he gives one fuck, two fucks, any, any fucks at all about that conversation from last year. I, I truly believed him when he said that, like, there's no point in beating a a this a dead horse with it. Um, I, I I do believe he 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 is good. <laughs> he is good without having the conversation, without being as present. And I feel like his well being had a lot to do with Candace's decision not to return. And I don't I don't hold that against her at all. I that's kind of what you do in this situation like that's what i would do I, as a married woman that's what i would do and i understand if my partner would do the same thing it it, it does no good for their household it, it doesn't at this point and a lot of people wanted to you know clown can say oh well um i bet those checks over there aren't as good as these checks well i don't know if you guys have ever heard the phrase like all good all money is not good money but that's that's what's going on here. This money is no longer good money because it doesn't bring peace. To, it, it disrupts their their home. How can you have peace when you got people from your children's school calling you, asking, you know, is everything good and stuff like that? Because they heard about the bullshit accusations that that were placed on your name. How can you be good when you're losing jobs and clients and people are looking at you cockeyed crazy, as Giselle would like to say, because somebody said that you forced them into a bedroom and that you 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 grab someone's butt? Like that's not no little shit. And I'm, and I'm sick of people in these comments saying and trying to act like and just gloss over the fact that this situation, the things that were said, those wrong, the wrong word choice that was said, I need them to look and understand and see the damage that was done when that was put out there. I need the upcoming seasons to tank because the producers aren't hearing us. Let their precious Jizzy be the reason this show is gone for good. And 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 when that and when that happens, if and when that happens, it's just gonna be what's gonna be because we've been saying the same shit for seasons now. We've been saying the same shit for seasons now. Uh, people people writing articles about the shit like it's been said. So whether you take it into consideration going forward or not, 
a lot of us have made up our minds that the, the it's just not giving. It's not enjoyable to watch. And we're getting tired. <clears throat> Giselle said Big Rob wasn't that close this season. Um, and I feel like that has to do with the fact that of how she handled the the stuff last season and how she doesn't even try to help herself. So then that just causes more problems. And we've seen on this um, reunion how Giselle even tried to like toss her a, a, a life vest a couple times and she just still is stuck on stupid when it comes to Tawan and how she navigates her own life. So when she tried to muster up them tears about um, having the label of colorism, colorist placed on her name, like, eh. So we're supposed to care how, how your feelings are heard about it, but you don't care about how we even got, how I even got to, to the position of calling you a color. But I'm supposed to care about you crying now. I feel like Candace probably at this point was like almost like questioning her sanity probably. And that's not like, once it gets to that point, y'all like, and that's no cap at all. Like just in regular everyday life, when someone brings you to that point where you're like questioning your own sanity and all of that, you got to know, you got to know it's time to step back. You got to know it's time to, to, to move right on along. That's why I'm glad to know that Candace is in better health. I, I hope it continues that way. And I hope this, her next move is her best move. I do. And you know what, y'all, and especially for like my new subscribers, because I know I've said this before, if you've been here for a bit, like, don't get me wrong. Like Candace was never like, I was never a big Candace fan, but I'm always going to be unbiased when it comes to these types of situations. I'm always going to be objective when it comes to these situations. And I'm going to call out bullshit when I see it. And I see a lot of bullshit from this show. And I have been seeing it for quite some time. And then y'all were left on a damn cliffhanger. So the same thing they teased us with last week they teased us again with this week that's how you know this is trash because you couldn't find any other thing to tease us and leave us off with i should cancel i should cancel my subscription right now just for them doing that i know i asked this i know i asked this last week because we Again, we left off at the same point last week, but what do you guys think that G is going to say again? Um, I Sorry, y'all. I'm on my lashes. It's like, uh, what do you guys think that uh, Gordon's going to say? Um, I'm still sticking by perhaps he's going to say some um, that he's, he's ill. I don't hope that at all, but we can only speculate right now. So that's what I'm going with. Um, I'm assuming we're going to get into when, when does the, tra the trailer doesn't came out right yet. It comes out tomorrow. Is it, is it Tuesdays? It's not out. Is it? Y'all let me know. Um, we don't know anything else yet. So that's what I can speculate about that. I'm sure. Aneka and Wendy, they're going to have their, they're going to have an exchange. Are we going to hear anything from Ashley? Probably not. What does she have going on? But again, she keeps chiming in to, to say little random things, but we go on part three, y'all, and we ain't really heard much from Ashley. And at least not directly, because even in this episode, the only thing I feel like she was asked was about the, the lawsuit. And that was really that's really between Michael and Candace. And I'm pretty sure if Michael was there, 
Andy, they would have just saved that question for when Michael got out there. So, honestly, Ashley hasn't added anything but some ad libs. <laughs> like, so I'm kind of starting to see a little bit more and more that, yeah, maybe Ashley isn't coming back. And I'm also, unfortunately, been feeling for some odd reason. And I hate to even say this to y'all, but I honestly have been feeling like Robin is going to bring her ass back. I do. I feel like she's not fired. I don't even see, I don't even know if she's been demoted. Like I, I genuinely feel like she probably is coming back. I hope not, but I, that's where I've been kind of leaning towards lately. But that's really all I got, y'all. What time? Where are we at? Where are we at? Mm. Is there anything else they wanted to highlight? Anybody else saying anything stupid on here? I'm sure they are. I haven't heard not one apology come out of Robin's or Giselle's mouth. No type of accountability, nothing. But Wendy and Candace have to explain themselves. Hmm, interesting. So you missed that last reunion when she apologized to both Chris and Candace. She said and did absolutely nothing to Candace or Wendy or anyone else for that matter this season. What is she to apologize for? I wonder if Robin questioned Juan like she did Chris. Now, we all know the answer to that. I don't understand why she can't question Chris when they tried to be all in her business. Like, people really, y'all, like, people really be saying these things. I don't understand why she can't question Chris because they tried to, when they tried to be all in her business. Robin, you stay in people's goddamn business. Are you serious? You dressed up as a whole pizza delivery man. If that ain't being in somebody's business, I don't know what it is because I don't dress up and pop up at people's house unless I wanna be in their business. And I've never done that because I don't like being in people's business. Anyway. How, like, y'all really be saying this? I don't blame her. She can question all she wants. All they did was worry about her business the entire season. It's none of their business, and she chooses not to be so the fact that she did it on the reunion, how did they like it? Got a taste of their own medicine. These comments are delusional as hell, y'all. Like, like, crazy as hell. Giselle reminds me of Phaedra when it comes to reading the ladies. She never gets loud and that makes them mad. She don't give them the reaction they want. She'll read in a low tone and be done. She'll read in a low tone and be done. Why dance with offbeat wolves? They come on with their made up personalities and she don't break her script. She stays in character.
it's the Giselle don't give them the reaction she wants. She reads in a low tone and be done. What does she read in a low tone? What does she read in a high or medium tone? What does she read, period? Giselle, are we talking about the same Giselle? Is there another Giselle on Bravo? Hey, Google, is there another um, Giselle on Bravo? I, I don't got it, Google, I got it. <laughs> But I, I, anyway, like, crazy as hell in these comments, y'all. I can't make it up. And this is the type of stuff that really makes it even less enjoyable because I'm like, it's one thing if they're on the network and they're playing in our faces, but we can't even get on the same page in the comments. And y'all, as somebody who reviews these shows, you don't have to tell me. I am completely okay with hearing differences in opinions. You do not have to agree with my opinion. That's okay. But there comes a point where when, she, when something's messed up, it's, it's just, it's messed up, period. It's not Barb's way. It's not um, freaking Candace's way. It's not freaking um, Derek's way down, down around the corner. Like it's nobody's way. There's just certain things in life that wrong is wrong and right is right in certain cases and fair is fair and unfair is unfair. But when certain people get in these comments saying this type of stuff, I'm just like, are you watching the show in reverse? Like, I don't, I don't understand what you're watching because it can't be the same thing as me. And if you're using Phaedra as an example of reads, like, and I already tells me everything I need to know about you anyway. Ugh. I am I am the only one who sees they are all at fault for different things. Giselle defamed Chris and doubled down on a false narrative. Robin does seem like she is gunning for Candace's marriage. Candace takes it way too far, is very aggressive at times, and is just trashy when she argues. And Wendy did lie about Giselle and her mom in hospital thing. I like them all at times and dislike all at times. I want somebody to walk up to everybody who be these comments delusional as hell and do the exact same things that Giselle does to, to them and or Robin does to them or whatever. Because you would then backtrack on that statement where you say Candace, Candace takes it way too far and she's very aggressive at times and trashy when she argues fuck all that i don't i don't care I, I don't care about any of that that's starting again in the middle stop doing that start at the beginning you can't tell me how to come at you after you either physically physically assaulted me lied on my husband um you you can't that's just, just to name a few. You cannot tell me how to respond. Like just because Giselle does what she does and she's not she's not cussing or um, uh, ye yelling to the high heavens or whatever when she's delivering whatever false narrative she's delivering, it doesn't matter that she's not doing that. And it just and it also doesn't matter that Candace chooses to add some maybe some of those elements into the things that she says. Once you disrespect me, you cannot tell me how to respond. And I really need certain people in these comments to understand that. That's just a life lesson in period. Cause I I'm genuinely concerned for those people in life if that's really how they they navigate through their own personal lives because they're gonna have a they're gonna have a rude they're gonna have the rudest awakening ever when they meet somebody like me. 
on the street for real. Because if you disrespect me, and I said it the other day, I am going to the South Pole every single time. I don't know how else to say it, but I think I'll, I, 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 I can already feel myself getting uh, irritated again, y'all. So I'm going to leave it at that. But let me just read the rest of y'all's comments before we get out of here. Yeah, I'm gl- Yes, not true at all. They just be they just be talking like I don't get it. Girl, what? I feel the same way when I read these comments, same exact way. We must be watching two different shows. They must be watching a show in another language, in another universe, um, another galaxy, because this cannot be the same show that I that we watch, clearly. No, just that Gizzard was still fight like. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I needed that laugh. Hey, boo, y'all. I can't make this up. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, yeah. You said we. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I did. I did. You, you caught you caught me mid cuss. Um, you caught me mid cuss. Y'all, please, if you're not subscribed to my new Bonnie Scotch's channel, please go ahead and head over to her channel and make sure you're subscribed. She makes great content. And also make sure you're subscribed to pretty much everybody in <laughs> this um live chat has channels so make sure you are following my good cousin ranch and ricardo as well make sure you're following my good sis no Reeds, and my other good sis um miss california cutie because yeah i think that's yeah that's that's everybody make sure you're following them as well because they also make wonderful content um i just like uh, Oh, oh, you're so sweet. Um, hold on, okay. Oh, um, one second. I just, I can't make it up, y'all. I really can't, but I'm really glad that we only have one more episode. Trust me. I, I'm so glad that we only have one more episode because I, I, I don't, mm, I really just don't understand how much more I can take. I really can't. I can't. Um, they're choosing to be willfully ignorant because they don't like Candace. That's it. Ignoring all logic that's presented to them, which only, which honestly, it, it doesn't make anybody else other honestly than themselves look crazy. You're making yourself look crazy when you, um, you're making yourself look crazy when you freaking just ignore everything in front of your face just because you like somebody it's okay to to like somebody and call them out on their wrongdoings. You don't have to agree with everything that somebody like. Is that what you guys practice in real life? Because if it's my if you're my friend, family member, whoever, and you do something I don't like or something that's not cool, I'm gonna say something to you. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna have a conversation. We're gonna come to a resolution, and then we're gonna keep rolling. I don't really understand why. That's not something that we haven't learned on this show at certain people's big ages. It's crazy. It's crazy. Oh, okay. You see it? Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, don't worry. Don't worry. You, you hear that? We got to we gotta um, put our heads together and, <laughs> and give people what they want. Um. Yes, so stay tuned for, for all, all different types of content with that being said, y'all, because we got one more episode of this and then we're going to be done. So please, um, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you're subscribed so that we can have one more conversation about this show and more conversations in the future about other shows and other types of content. If you have not hit that like button, please, please, please hit that like button. And again, shout outs to everybody who's watching from Twitter. Between both Twitter and YouTube, I'm seeing that we have 56 people. So please, if you have not came over from Twitter and joined the channel, please make sure you do so. Um, the link is in the description box, Barbie's World. The show is so triggering now. We need a shake up. We need a sh- 
we need a a shakeup. We need a lot of things. We need a shakeup. We need a patch up. We need a band aids. We need we need a tourniquet. Like this show needs a pin tourniquet. That's what it needs because it's bleeding out everywhere. <laughs> I'm definitely good. Oh, so stay. Yep, we got some content coming for you guys. So don't worry. Do not worry. I need Andy to stay right where Chris was and answer the question, not move on to Juan. Let's answer why Gizzard can say I said the wrong word after lying. And we just, we just hop in the car and move and just drive right past it. Like we're just driving down the countryside, having a grand old time. Like maybe again, y'all, maybe I'm crazy as hell. I don't know. Oh, thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate it. But y'all, that's really all I got. Um, I am going to get out of here. Be looking for some other types of content. I, I've seen a lot going on with the diddler of it all. So be, look, be on the lookout for some Diddy updates this week. And again, some other types of content because I want to start discussing more things other than just reality TV and um, shows that are currently uh hooked up to a tourniquet so yeah <laughs> nonetheless yes they do need the butt of a goat um maybe a couple goats um a whole flock of goats like i don't think goats don't come in flocks they come in what do you call a group of goats i don't even i don't even know anyway y'all i appreciate you for being here for this hour and a half that we've been up in here again shout out to the replay gang make sure we keep this conversation going in the comments below i would love to hear your thoughts opinions critiques feelings on both my rant and the episode itself and also you can let me know and suggest some different types of shows content that you would like me to talk about um since we are nearing the end with this show and until next time, y'all, I will catch you later. Bye.